We have a great show for you today. We have the artistic director from Martha Graham Dance Company. Her name is Janet Elber, and she's here. We're going to be showing some film and photos of Martha Graham Company, Dance Company, over the years. I want to welcome Janet Elber. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks, Ginger. I'm so delighted excited. to be here. And I want to uh, give a shout to Lorraine Oler. She was the one that recommended you to come of in. Course. We're going to start out the show with a video. 90 years of Martha Graham in 90 seconds. If the control room can roll in our first video so we can see just some background on the Martha Graham Dance Company. What can I say? <laughs> I wanted to be a dancer ballerina when I was growing up, so it's a really, really fun for me to have you here. Oh, thank like you. Like you were a real, real one. And and working as a soloist for, you were the principal yes. dancer at that time. I was a principal dancer. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful time. This was in the 1970s and mm -hmm. 80s. And Martha was still alive mm -hmm. and very active creatively, creating new dances and directing her classic dances for, mm -hmm. for my generation of the company. Did you know that you were working with such a great legend at that time? Well, yes and no. I mean, you, because she was there every day, mm -hmm. you, you didn't stop and go, wow, I'm working with this legendary choreographer because mm -hmm. you were working and you were working really hard mm -hmm. and she was, um, she was hard on you. She, everything she said could be so, um, uh, so revelatory, you know, so inspirational when she was directing you in a dance or... Um, so it was quite an extraordinary experience, but you didn't stop and say, gosh, <laughs> I should be recording this for posterity, mm -hmm. although sometimes I wish I had. Mm -hmm. Can adults take classes at Martha Graham? Oh, company? sure, yeah. You know, our, our company is 90 years old, and so is our school. Um, mm -hmm. We're one of the oldest schools of modern dance in the world, mm -hmm. and um, we have open classes for anybody who just wants to come, who loves dance and wants to come and try the Martha Graham style. Mm -hmm. Martha Graham style is very core driven, mm -hmm. you know, very um, much using the, the muscles of your torso. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great workout mm -hmm. as well as being, you know, other than just a workout, it actually has some poetry that goes mm -hmm. in it. You know, there's music and, and you can express yourself a little bit more. And what, tell us about the students that you have at mm -hmm. Martha Graham, mm -hmm. because you do have a company, so right. um, you have students there that train throughout the year? And oh yeah, we have full-time students mm -hmm. that, that come to the school mm -hmm. and get a certificate. Um, many of them come after college. Um, and we have a large international program, probably about 40 students that mm -hmm. are from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Um, because of Martha Graham's reputation mm -hmm. and, and the, the style of dance that we teach, the Martha Graham technique is so um, strengthening, mm -hmm. uh, so, so good for your stamina. It really prepares you for any style of dance that you want to go in into. Mm -hmm. The costumes are gorgeous. Yeah. You, do you oversee all of the, the production or is it more the dance that you... Um, 
Well, no, we as the I artistic oversee, director, as I'm artistic not, director, yeah. I oversee all of the mm -hmm. the costuming and the production, how the lighting works, mm -hmm. and we've actually had a lot of that in our lives in the last few years because when Hurricane Sandy hit, all of our costumes were in the basement of our building. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been more than the usual just fixing up the costumes mm -hmm. for a new cast. We've had to replace um, almost everything and refurbish our sets and. Um, it's been a big job. It's uh, located at 55 Bethune Street. That's right. where the dance program is. I'm familiar with that mm -hmm. building, and I'm, uh, I know that a lot of people lost. Yes, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. the art, other artists in the building had their studios downstairs. and Recording it, equipment, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. I've actually been down in that area because I worked with the synagogue that was in the building. The upside is we have beautiful new costumes. <laughs> 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 the dancers are loving it. <laughs> That's great, and, and you're, you're starting your 91st year, actually, right. in February. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that and how people can participate in uh, the programming um, oh where do great we, where do we find well tickets? In, in New York City mm -hmm. we're gonna be at the Joyce Theater this mm -hmm. year for for two weeks uh, opening night is Valentine's Day oh that sounds exciting yes uh -huh. exactly we'll, we'll try to have something that's uh, you know uh -huh. romantically <laughs> themed um, and we're there for two weeks we're, we're doing some Martha Graham classics which are so profound and um, you know wonderful to see and then we we also have some works by today's choreographers and we're going to have two world premieres mm -hmm. um, brand new works that uh, actually have not even been created yet we're going into a rehearsal period in December and January oh, wow. to create these new works mm -hmm. and um, so those two weeks will be jam-packed and you can get tickets at Joyce.org mm -hmm. or come to our website MarthaGram.org mm -hmm. Um, but also check our website because we're, we tour all over. We've just been to Virginia and Ohio and Pennsylvania. And uh, next week we're going to Cuba. We're going to be the first modern dance company in Cuba since the travel embargo was wow. lifted. Um, and we'll be in Spain in June and uh, all over the states this year from uh, Portland, Oregon to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. How oh, exciting. Uh, yeah, we travel a lot. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Do you travel with the group? Oh, sure. Do yeah. you really? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Yeah. But it's a, it's exciting, too, to be able to travel to new ground. Exactly. Such. You know, when I stopped dancing, I thought, boy, I never want to see another suitcase. <laughs> but, you know, after a few years off to mm -hmm. get married and have children mm -hmm. and stuff, now I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I really do. Very good. And inspiring youth of today. Absolutely. So so most of the students are uh, who are in your dance company are after college, so that'd be they're in their middle twenties or so. Yeah. Well, yeah, the the ones in the company are um, we have one young man who came straight from high school. He knew he wanted to dance with the Martha Graham company mm -hmm. and studied at our school and then was taken into the company. So they're they're not students anymore. They're now professional dancers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have about half of the half of the company. Uh, about we, the company is 15 dancers, mm -hmm. so probably eight or nine of them are from overseas. Oh, isn't that we have something? dancers from um, Japan and China mm -hmm. and uh, Italy and France and Belgium and you know just all over the world. So when Martha Graham was growing up, right, and then she mm -hmm. invented these new style of dances right. with hinges and lunges and such. Right. What was it so different from the dance styles at that time. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that for us? Sure. Um, when she was a young dancer, now she was born in 1894, so it's only like 30 years after the Civil War. And um, as, a, as a teenager, she saw Ruth St. Dennis, who was an early American dancer, um, doing the style of dance in that era. And it was very exotic, mm -hmm. um, escapist, kind of decorative, the really fancy costumes and floating fabric and smoke, and we call it the veil wafting period. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, and Martha Graham became a star dancing that stuff. She was oh, evidently amazingly charismatic on stage. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in about uh, the 1920s, late 1920s, she, she felt that it was kind of inconsequential, it didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, she really wanted to create a style of dance that would talk about real human issues and real human emotion. Um, and so she, she went out to, to find a way of dancing that sort of stripped away that decoration, its facade. She mm -hmm. wanted all of that gone. And she began to study human body language. 
how we move when we're unhappy or when we're stressed or when we're happy, you know, how we hold our bodies, how we turn our heads. And, and she discovered that emotion rides on the breath. When you laugh or when you sob, it's all coming from the center of the torso. Oh, isn't that interesting? So she invented a, um, a style, a technique of dancing that where the torso is really the motor. Um, you know, you, you, uh, it directs your extremities. Um, and it's called the Martha Graham Technique. It, your audience probably has heard about the Martha Graham's contraction and release. That's the essence of her technique. That's uh, the contraction is when the torso folds, it kind of curls in, and, uh, coils in the energy, and the exhale. And the release is the inhale, where all the energy mm -hmm. expands out. Um, so this was really radical in 1930 when this started happening. Audiences were kind of shocked that um, they were seeing the torso move. You know, I say Martha discovered the pelvis long before Elvis. <laughs> you know, it was it was kind of wow. radically yeah. sexual mm -hmm. and intimate, and and people recognized human beings on stage, mm -hmm. not just kind of you know swans and royalty mm -hmm. and. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we have a few photos oh, of great. that time mm -hmm. through modern day. Oh, these first few photos are just demonstrating the type of dance that she did as a young woman before she discovered her revolutionary new style. And how old do you think she is around oh, this time? Oh, she's probably 25 mm -hmm. or so. This would be 1920-ish. And the great big hairdos and the earrings, and this is very sort of, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it is, it is vaudeville, really. So this one's even more bizarre. I mean, that headdress you, makes you wonder how anybody could dance in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in something like that. It has to be very heavy, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but it was really, that's, again, sort of cultural appropriation. We, everyone talks about that now, but mm -hmm. these early dancers were just sort of borrowing the look from the Orient and uh, very sort of faux Oriental. Now, this is when she has really broken the mold and begun to do very stark geometric works. You can see the costumes are very simple. She's in a plain white dress. Her chorus members are in a black sheath with a black uh, scarf on their heads. And the costuming, and as you see, the, the architecture of the choreography um, sends the message, because this is a dance called Heretic. And Martha Graham played the heretic, the, the one person, the woman in white, who was trying to forge a new way. And her dancers kept creating these walls of oh, you know, blocking her at every turn, literally. So the, uh, the choreography was the, the message, the emotional message. And the, this dance, this is 1929, uh, this is really so foreign to the kind of vaudevillian mm -hmm. fun stuff that people were doing, because she really was sending political messages, social messages. Um, for a woman in 1930, this is only 10 years after we got the vote, uh, to have this Imagine. kind of political voice mm -hmm. on stage, a voice without speaking, of course, mm -hmm. was really remarkable. This is more, this is Primitive Mysteries, and we'll be dancing this dance at the Joyce. Mm. And it, it won't be in black and white. Our dancers are, are full, full, in full color. Mm -hmm. um, but this is almost a, uh, she took she, inspiration from the rituals of the Pueblos. She, she went to the Southwest as a young woman, and she saw the, the rituals of the Native Americans there. Oh, and she was um, just taken with their, the geometry of the, the rituals and their importance. And um, she took inspiration from it and created primitive mysteries. I take Pilates and I notice some Pilates poses in there. That's, that's <laughs> that core driven, yeah. core driven movement, yeah. So again, I just, these, these photos can just show you what a leader in the modernist movement she was. It's, it's almost like work by Kandinsky or um, Picasso come to life, yeah. So the, um, Martha Graham, again, of course, is the lead figure in these photos. She always uh, wanted to feature herself. In fact, when she was asked as a 
older dancer, whether she wanted to be remembered as a choreographer or as a dancer. She said, oh, I want to be remembered as a dancer. Mm. She, but of course, now she's remembered as a choreographer. Mm -hmm. So this is our company today, and, and uh, they're dancing in one of Martha's best known dances, which is Appalachian Spring. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody knows the music that was written by Aaron Copeland, mm -hmm. but they don't really know that it was written for Martha. She commissioned him to write this music and, and um, sent him a script of what she envisioned for the dance, and he wrote that beautiful music that weaves a gift be simple, the, the hymn into the middle of it. Mm -hmm. So we often do that. Here's another dance that, that we'll be dancing at the Joyce. This one is called Dark Meadow, and uh, it's a dance for 10 of our company members. This is the lead couple. Um, it's a dance about life's journey and seeking connection with oneself or with others, um, and it's quite, quite beautiful. It's from 1947. This one's uh, more fun, and this is the last work that Martha Graham choreographed when she was 90, let's see, she was 95 years old. And it's set to Scott Joplin's music, The Maple Leaf Rag. Uh, and in it, she made fun of her own serious reputation. Uh, so the dancers have a lot of fun dancing The Maple Leaf Rag. Look at this. See, isn't that funny? Beautiful. It's, yeah. That's, now this one's a little more serious. This is Lloyd Knight in Rust. This is one of the contemporary choreographers that we work with. Nacho Duato created this work, and, and um, it's an abstract work, but it references um, uh, war, the issues of war, and um, serious topics. This is Xin Ying, our Chinese dancer, dancing satiric festival song. Um, from 1932, Martha Graham um, made a very funny uh, little dance for herself, and we were able to reconstruct it. You know, people don't realize that dance isn't like music. It generally, it's not written down. And uh, sometimes, of the many dances that Martha Graham created, she created 181. Oh we really only have the material to bring back between 50 and 55 of them. Um, because she didn't write them down, and she didn't, they weren't all filmed. Um, there was no record of them, and you really can't um, figure out what a dancer did if you haven't got um, a film of it. Well, yeah. these, are, these are from dances that are going to be in our Joyce season in February. Um, one by Pontus Lidberg, and another by um, uh, Nacho Duato, Annie B. Parson. And uh, Sidi Larbi Sherkawi, the mm -hmm. wonderful Belgian choreographer, mm -hmm. plus the classics of Martha Graham, mm -hmm. and and our world class dancers, they really are astonishing. Mm -hmm. You know, I th I sometimes say I have the greatest job in the world because to sit in a rehearsal with these gorgeous 21st century athletes. I was at Martha Graham for a performance during the summertime. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You mentioned it was yes, Graham Yes, I think two? you came Graham 2. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Tell our, us about that program. You know, it's wonderful because it, it's sort of like a farm team for, for the main company. Mm -hmm. It's our advanced students mm -hmm. in uh, a, a Graham company. Mm -hmm. They also do Graham dances and new, new choreography. Mm -hmm. And they do a lot of our arts education outreach. They work in the in the public schools. They do lecture demonstrations. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, so they're they're quite busy, mm -hmm. um, and for me it's wonderful because if somebody in the main company gets injured or it's time to, <laughs> you know, s someone leaves, they do leave at, uh, eventually. Uh, then I really have a group of dancers to look to, mm -hmm. who already know a lot of our repertory That's and and they know the technique. Mm -hmm. You know, they've come to our school. So when you're looking at a dancer. Mm -hmm. say for your program do you look for someone who's super tall or on the shorter <laughs> side longer <laughs> arms than longer legs it's a good question <laughs> because every time we audition uh -huh. I, I announce to those those hopefuls that are there they're so oh, nervous and there are so many of them and I say look you know don't even just relax mm -hmm. because you don't know what I'm looking for 
in the Martha Graham world, sometimes we need very short girls for the for the ingenue roles. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need tall women for the Earth Mother roles. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need tall hero-like men. Sometimes we need the more character. So you don't come to an audition. It's it's like a repertory theater company. Mm -hmm. You don't just come to an audition and because you're the very best dancer in the world, you mm -hmm. get the job. Mm -hmm. It often depends on what we're looking for. But these dancers are. Um, mm -hmm. 100% physical every day, jumping and mm -hmm. kicking and lifting and, you know. It's so. incredible. I talked with some raquettes and yeah. I asked them what the, the average age of a raquette was. Uh -huh. And it's 30 to 35 yeah. because they said that, you know, when they're dancing, it's on steel. And they, with the taps, it's steel on steel with their joints. So oh, you have yes. to have a very developed body. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I, I, I'm always curious about that, you know, right. for, for, for dance groups and you know what you're looking for and then I, as a CPA I've worked with costume designers so I've been in their shops when they're making these beautiful costumes mm -hmm. and I mean that just it isn't such an art in itself oh you know, absolutely the flow of the, yeah. the, um, the material and mm -hmm. the colors right yeah and, and, and how is uh, Martha Graham different your dance company different today than what the back early in the day yeah mm -hmm. um, well you know, I often say we don't we don't play Mozart on the original instruments. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. dancers have changed so much over the years. It's like the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Every four years they break a record. You know, legs go higher, turns are faster, jumps are higher. The, the bodies have changed. Um, and dancers just are so much more facile mm -hmm. these days than they were back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, every 10 years. Um, so. And Fortunately, what, why do you think that is? It's just because I think it's just I, I, I don't know. It's the same as the Olympics. I mean, I guess people's imagination. If somebody breaks a record like that, and in your mind, it gives you the confidence to say, "Well, they did it, mm -hmm. and so maybe I can just do a little bit better." And you know, you're constantly dance like like the um, athletic sports is is very much about being in competition with yourself. Mm -hmm. How much more can I do? How much farther can I go? And it takes a certain type of personality to be into that mm -hmm. um, and to want to do it on stage and to be going to their absolute limit. Um, so it's, uh, it, you know, it's an extraordinary mindset to be able to get into that. Now, do you, uh, it, do you think it's because people also start at an early age in training in dance? Or do you actually yeah. find people that are adults that come in to dance and then get accepted into your program? Usually they start at a pretty early age if mm -hmm. they're going to be professional dancers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, and what would be the lifeline of someone? Uh, do you do you work with students up to the age of thirty, or really depends? Oh, on Oh, there are students in our school that are you know all ages. Okay. All ages. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're not just a professional track school. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, dancers, you know, to be able to dance at your peak mm -hmm. and and to really be competitive, mm -hmm. a reason why people buy tickets, um, probably into your late thirties. Mm -hmm. For Martha Graham, mm -hmm. I think for ballet companies, it's a little earlier mm -hmm. because they've got to wear those point shoes. Oh and, my! Yeah, it looks beautiful, but it does look beautiful, but it does. It's a strain on your body. Mm -hmm. I'm all mm -hmm. about the feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. We're actually getting uh, winding down to the end of the show. We have about a minute left of conversation. So if you could just mention again, um, uh, uh, where can people find Martha Graham Company and tell us a little bit about the, the opening that you're going to have in February. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you can find us, uh, our whole tour schedule is at MarthaGraham.org. Mm -hmm. So come to our website. If you want to see more of our archives, we've just put an exhibit on the Google Arts and Culture oh. website. Mm -hmm. You can see a lot of old films and, oh, and uh, photos of Martha Graham herself. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be at the Joyce Theater opening February 14th. Go to Joyce.org mm -hmm. and uh, come and see some of these remarkable classics alongside some work that hasn't even been created yet. That's you, amazing you, you to me. You can be one of the first audiences <laughs> to see these works. That's really great. Thank you so much for joining us. Such a pleasure it, it to be talking to you. My name is Ginger Broderick, and I've been interviewing Janet Elber. She's the artistic director of the Martha Graham Dance Company. And we're going to close the show with a film, if we can roll in an ending video of one of the works of Martha Graham.